Hey everyone, it's Doc Fire. It's time for another Doc Fire Down and Dirty Tech video. All right, so today's tech video is going to be about macro line fittings and the leak in a macro line fittings, and specifically the leak that happens where the macro line uh, hose goes into the metal fitting. So um, <clears throat> a lot of people, when they get that leak, they'll go down to the paintball store and they'll buy a new macro line fitting. That's not always the problem. Um, it could be just something very simple. Uh, things you want to look at is you want to make sure that your uh, macro line hose is long enough so it actually seals in there. And secondly, that it's not all gnarled up on the end. And thirdly is, um, if that's all fine, your macro line hose is fine, it's the O-ring on the inside, which is in general in these type of macro line fittings is a 010 size O-ring or number 10. Uh, standard o-ring which are most paintball uh, if you don't have an o-ring kit you should go out and buy it buy one and so it's that o-ring is damaged and what will happen is if you have a let me get some white background in here if you have a macro line and it's cut off with a razor blade and these edges are sharp here every time you insert your your macro line into this fitting it has potential to clip that o-ring and by clipping that o-ring eventually you're gonna it's not gonna seal up around that hose correctly and so there's some remedies we're gonna go through about fixing that but let's first go about if you have a clipped o-ring how do you how do you fix that clip o-ring well it's fairly easy you need a few tools obviously a new number 10 o-ring an o-ring pick or a toothpick or something like that I have a little flathead uh, screwdriver here and uh, all you're gonna do is you're gonna have this little locking ring, the little release ring right here. You get a flathead screwdriver in there. You're just gonna twist until that pops out. And you'll see that will pop out. You wanna inspect and clean any oil from this. And you see there's a whole bunch of little cuts in this. You wanna make sure none of these little fingers are broken off. So make sure that's, that's in good shape. Uh, when you do that, you're gonna dig down inside with your uh, macro line, uh, it should be your, uh, your pick or a toothpick and you're going to pull out that old o-ring here it is and you set that off to the side make sure you dispose of your old o-rings so you don't get get them confused um, with uh, good o-rings uh, use a little bit of oil to kind of pre-lube and clean first clean the inside of this with like a q-tip use a little bit of oil to um, to pre-lube the o-ring uh, i've already pre-lubed this so uh, you're going to pop this o-ring in oops you're just going to stuff it in the hole and what I'll do is I'll get a little piece of uh, macro line or whatever, or, or your macro line, just kind of help just push it down in the hole. Make sure it seats down in there. Uh, put a little lubrication on this. This will push back down in there, and your O-ring has been replaced. Now, before you go and jam your new macro line that you just cut um, into that and potentially chip that O-ring, is there's, there's some things you can do out there and the goal is to try to chamfer this edge after you cut this you don't want that sharp edge you want to kind of give the best benefit of this macro line so it's not going to damage that and so there's a couple ways of doing that right um, i have two methods that i use uh, there's one that requires well both require some sort of a tool but uh, one tool you may have to go out and purchase so when's the last time we seen a pencil sharpener so here's, I got this at the dollar store or something like that. And what I do is I use the large port. It seems to be a little bit more uh, easy to control uh, the cutting. And what I'll do is I'll just put some white background in here. I'll just cut this and you can see I put a chamfer around that. And so when that goes in, it, it it's the O-ring slips around that. If I can find that number 10, here it is right here. The one I took off. So what that does is that O-ring slips around this just like that and that's how it seals okay and then that little me that metal collar that's a locking collar so when that goes in there then it's uh, it expands out and puts and grabs onto this um, macro line and keeps it from slipping out all right and so if you chamfer this a it will go on a little bit easier and you have a less chance of clipping that o-ring now let's say you don't have this and you're at the field well there's enough smokers out there still and uh, so one of the other things you can do is you just get a um, there's a lighter it's a barbecue lighter and all I do is I is I just kind of tap the end of it and run it over with my fingers make sure it's not uh, I try to soften that edge just a little bit just just kind of soften that edge 
And you'll see here that after doing that, let's put this white background back again, is it's softened this edge on this. And that's one way you can just kind of bend that over so it, it, it has a nice insertion. It doesn't, doesn't want to clip that O-ring. There we go. And I do recommend I actually put it in there uh, without any lubrication on it. Put a little, little bit of lube on there. Uh, use whatever your favorite lube is. If you like Dow 33, use it. If you like gun oil, use that. Uh, you know, or not, or, you know, this is uh, Outlast or Casey Trouble Free. Uh, but there you go, down and dirty. Don't buy this unless you absolutely have to. Replace the number 10 O-ring. If you like this video, hit the like button and please always subscribe. All right, have a good one, folks.